Hello everyone, good afternoon. Welcome to another Stampin' Chat Live. As always, I'm gonna start off by having a look at my iPad and seeing if I'm as live as I think I am. Because you can never tell until you look. And Ooh, and I am. I'm as live as I think okay, I am. that was loud. <laughs> Okay, so I'm definitely live. And from that, it doesn't look as if there's quite as much time lag as usual, but we'll see, maybe that will change. Well, welcome, welcome. I can't believe it's Friday again. And yes, I say that every single week, don't I? But this week has just flown by. Um, it's lovely to be back with you. I'm gonna be talking about trees and leaves and making projects involving those very shortly. Um, yes, I'm going to put hand cream on because as always I've washed my hands but I haven't given myself enough time to put my hand cream on before I pressed all the buttons to go live. So let's just do that. And while I do, I'm going to apologise in case we end up with background noise. Um, we have somebody who comes and mows the lawn for us and he's been due all week but everything's been so wet he's ended up having to delay it and delay it. And the only time he was going to be able to come was between two and three today, which is not ideal. So I have all the windows shut. Um, I've actually had to put the fan on because I don't know what it's like with you. But although it's not a particularly bright and sunny day, it's very airless and, and humid. So uh, I was absolutely sweltering in here. So I have put the fan on low. I'm hoping that's not going to bother you. If you can hear the fan noise and it's really irritating, let me know and I'll turn it off. And I really hope that the lawnmower won't be a problem. Um, usually I think it's not too bad because I've got this separate microphone which seems to work all right uh, and kind of fades out the background noise but we'll see if it's unbearable you'll have to tell me okay so Pam is here and she says hello to everybody Marjorie's here Kay is here how nice welcome to everybody so how was your week that's what I would like to know did you have a good week what have you been up to have you been crafting? Have you been out? Have you seen family and friends? What have you been up to? I've had quite a quiet week actually here, which has been quite nice because last week was a bit manic with the new catalogue launch. Um, I've been busy, but I haven't had to go anywhere and I haven't really had very much to do at a particular time. Um, I did have my online team meeting on Monday, which was really nice. Um, the internet dropped out, so we ended up having it in two sections, but that's okay. Hopefully the internet will stay steady today. If by any chance I suddenly disappear, then just refresh the page a few times and I will be back with you as soon as I can. And it will, I will pop up in a, as a new video. Um, so every time you start a live session, uh, it comes up as a new session. So you won't be able to just stay in the session that we're in at the moment, but hopefully that's not going to happen. Belinda is here, she says hello to everybody. So yes, tell me about your week. So yes, I had a lovely team meeting on Monday. Um, I'm really excited to have our first face-to-face -face team meeting in a very long time in October. Um, but we had one online, which was great fun. We did some crafting together. Um, what else has happened this week? Marrows, <laughs> I'm overrun with marrows. If you've ever grown courgettes, you know that if you take your eye off a courgette for even a couple of hours, it will turn into a marrow and I took my eyes off the courgettes for about three days because we had all this rain and I wasn't really going into the garden and they've all turned into marrows <laughs> and with the best will in the world um, yet yeah, there's only so much marrow you can eat and it's not actually that nice anyway I don't think um, so yes yeah, so if any, any of you would love a marrow just let me know uh, just checking the comments I don't think there's anything else there okay um, what else has happened? Oh, my husband's got a very exciting day tomorrow. Um, he works on the Beaulieu estate, which is close to us, for those of you who are, are not so local. And um, they're having a, a very special celebratory day on the Beaulieu River tomorrow. So his big job tomorrow is to measure all the crabs in the crab catching competition and declare a winner. So I think that's a great responsibility and I'm not sure that um, I would want that one, but he's quite looking forward to it. So yes, we've been uh, talking about how to best handle a crab and uh, <laughs> avoid getting nipped. And uh, that's what he's doing tomorrow. Okay, what's happening in the Stamping Up world at the moment? Well, celebration, of course. A celebration is ongoing until the end of next month, which is fantastic. Um, I know from the orders that have been coming in that a lot of you are taking advantage of it. And uh, I'm expecting a huge Stamping Up delivery on Monday. I think three boxes of goodies. Um, a few are for me, but most are not for me. So uh, a lot of you have been ordering some really nice things. 
excuse me I can tell that you're really enjoying the new catalogue and I've had somebody join my team already so that is absolutely fantastic um, her wish list was really really long and it's such a good way of ticking things off your wish list by joining Stamping Up because you'll get £31 worth of them for free you can choose a bundle of stamps and dies or stamps and a punch for free and um, then everything else you buy you get a 20% discount on so really why wouldn't you want to join um, that's the best way to get the most value um, out of your crafting products so if that's something that might be interesting just get in touch with me um, you can email me or you can send me a message um, or type, even type a comment here I'm always happy to tell you a little bit more there's never ever any pressure from me to join um, but if you decide it's right for you I can help you do that um, in terms of classes uh, that I've just finished taking bookings for quite a few classes including my very first face-to-face -face classes in September again I'm very excited about that um, but I am still taking bookings for my first face-to-face -face fancy fold cards class in uh, a very long time again I, before the pandemic I was running that each month then we've gone online and with videos and the first face-to-face -face one will be in September it's running on Monday the 20th of September in the morning um, in Pilly near Lymington so close to where I live and you need to book by the 20th of August for that class uh, you'll make two fancy fold cards but before you make the cards you'll make a template for each and you'll also go home with a list of all the measurements and instructions so with that and with the template um, you will be able to remake that fancy fold time and again easily at home so two different fancy folds two different templates two sets of instructions and also you'll make two finished projects um, that class is £18 or if you would rather have goodies then you can place a £28 order uh, £28 before shipping and then that will give you the class for free so if you'd like to know more about that let me know Gillian is here and she's saying hi to everyone and hi to you too Gillian Okay, as always, um, I'll put out my plea for you to, to like or love and share this video. It helps me get seen by other people. Um, I'm very grateful to some of you who do it every single time. I'm grateful to any of you who have ever done it. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, I am getting new viewers through this and that's brilliant for me. If you're watching this on the replay on YouTube, then thank you again for watching it there. And if you, again, like the video and if you subscribe, then you will get notified every time I put one of these videos up. So there we go, that's my little plug for um, you joining me another time. All right, so I'm gonna turn the uh, camera down to my desktop, change everything around so you can see what's on my table, and we will get started with today's crafting. So I need, oops, there we go. I put my little post-it close by. Let's cover you over because I'll be wobbling you around quite a lot and I don't want you to feel poorly let's redo all the settings okay and I'll just recite the microphone and pick up all the cable so it's not dangling everywhere now the first thing I'm going to show you is the new sweet sampler because that does have a trees and leaves theme. So there is method in my madness. <laughs> and I'll be using lots of the things in the sampler on my project today. So it makes sense to show you that first. And I think I might be there. So let's pull that off. And I'll just have to tweak it a little bit when I can see what you can see. Okay try and make that a little bit straighter let's see if I've gone the right way this time no I haven't do you know I don't think it matters which way I turn this it's not the right way if I turn it the way the instinct tells me to it's the wrong way and if I turn it the way that doesn't feel right then it also seems to be the wrong way <laughs> there's a little bit of shadow down here somewhere so I'm sorry about that but I think I'm just gonna have to live with that um, yeah, hopefully that won't be a pain. It's not, I don't think, in the main part that you'll be looking at. All right, so Beauty of the Earth Sweet Sampler. 
So this is available now um, and I'll be taking orders for it until the 27th of August. Then I will order everything and cut it up and package it up and send it out to you on the 24th of September or you can collect it from me in that time. So I'll put the card aside for the minute and show you the star of the show which is the beautiful beauty of the earth paper. Now I've used this quite a few times already because it is just so stunning. Um, but you'll get a quarter of a pack of this paper so you'll get six pieces which are six inches by 12 inches which is lots of paper to play with so I'm just showing you both sides of the first paper here I used this a few weeks ago you may have seen me um, stamping and colouring on top of it and using it as the background for some summary cards and this one is beautiful watercolour trees and a wood grain in watercolour so everything in the paper is to do with trees and leaves and the outdoors this is one of the papers we're getting quite a lot of now where you can cut it in half across the middle and then you have a sort of a mirror image design here so these beautiful watercolored autumn trees here and then this one has got very loosely watercolored trees on the back So we've seen summery trees, autumny trees. Here's one that's perhaps got a bit more of a winter feel to it. I keep thinking, oh, this one's my favourite. Oh, this one's my favourite. <laughs> They're all so lovely. And on the back, you've got lots of lovely leaves. Then you've got branches with leaves. And then this looks to me um, like the view you would get of an autumn woodland if you were up very high in an aeroplane. Remember those days when you could go off somewhere in an aeroplane? <laughs> it's like that. Okay, and this one is also beautiful as a large piece, but also cut up into smaller pieces. So it's little groups of trees. And then just a lovely green watercolour wash on the back. So you get all those pieces of paper in the sweet sampler, which is a quarter of a pack of Beauty of the Earth paper and then you've got six sheets of card that are going to coordinate so there's Merry Merlot, Cajun Craze, Cinnamon Cider, Early Espresso, Mossy Meadow and Old Olive so some lovely greens and browns but also this plum colour because this features in quite a lot of the papers as well. There's another one that it's in if I can find it in this one. So six sheets of A4 there and then I'm also going to give you three card layers which I will emboss with um, an appropriate folder for you. So there are two cards. So this is a quarter sheet of A4 so it's plenty big enough for a C6 card layer. Um, so this is Cajun Craze and Cinnamon Cider and I've embossed both of these with the timber folder. Uh, let me try and get that in shot. So it's like a wood grain. The texture on this is lovely. And then a piece of early espresso which I've embossed with the bark embossing folder. So again I'm hoping the camera will pick this up. There's always such a delay. There we go. I can see what you can see now. So three embossed layers for you. Then some embellishments. So you'll get two meters of the faux suede trim. Um, this does feel very like suede. It's got a lovely kind of nap to it. It's a really nice trim for making male themed cards as well as the fact that in um, this early espresso color it goes beautifully with all those papers. And then you'll get two meters of linen thread, which is probably my most used trim of all. Um, it's perfect on all kinds of projects with a, a natural theme, whether it's you know butterflies or trees and leaves or flowers. Um, it's a very natural thread, so you'll find that there are slight variations in the thickness. Perfect on male themed projects as well. And then finally, just for a little bit of shine 
you'll get a quarter pack of champagne rhinestones which are, are a colour that goes really really well with the patterned paper and they'll add a little bit of sparkle but they're not quite as blingy as the regular rhinestones so you've got three sizes of rhinestone there so there you are so that is the sweet sampler in all its glory I really like this one because I just love this as a theme and that's everything that you'll get on it the price for that is £12 if you can collect it for, from me or if you'd like me to post it to you it's £14 and the, four, the extra £2 just covers second class postage plus a board backed envelope to protect it in the post and if you'd like one of those let me know by August the 27th um, and I can give you full details of payment you can um, pop a comment here or you can email me and this is my email address handmade at home at hotmail.co.uk so I'm just going to slide this back in the plastic bag you can note down my email address if you don't have it and then we'll do some crafting okay I'm just pulling all the bits out of my little bucket So for these projects um, I used I think pretty much everything that is in the sweet sampler because um, it, was <laughs> it was just a no-brainer really um, the colors and the images and everything else are just so perfect for a trees and leaves theme all right so what i'm going to make is or i'm going to complete i should say a little gift pack of cards i've got a box which i'll show you in a minute and i've got two styles of card which i'm making to go into the box so this is my first style and i have to thank mary Deathridge in the us because i first saw a card similar to this um, on her blog you can find her at stampsandlingers.com that's stamps then n and then lingers stampsandlingers.com um, and i thought this was great because as you'll see in a minute um, the circle of paper in the middle is cut from your background layer so you actually just need that one piece uh, and that then forms your embellishments as well so i'll make one of these and then i'll come back and show you those again And it was my mission for this gift pack of cards to make um, to not have any repetition of the papers as I made the cards you'll see that I've used the paper to cover my envelope flaps this is a trick taught to me by one of my friends and team members Rosie um, and it just looks so lovely when you get a card through the post and you've got some of the paper on the envelope flap but here are the pieces that I'm going to use on this particular card and this is how I've made all those cards I just showed you so I have a card base this is Mary Merlot just a standard C6 card base then I've got a layer here which is misty moonlight and a piece of my patterned paper let me just pop that back in there for the minute so I just picked two colors from the patterned paper for my card base and layer and actually I'm looking at that and that's too big I'll cut that down in just a sec and then I have a piece of patterned paper here and all I've done is use the layering circles dies to cut a circle out of the middle of my paper like that and the one I've used let me put it on my grid paper and measure it this circle is one and seven eighths inches in diameter and I've just cut it out of the center of my paper slightly up from the middle very slightly up and then I've cut two more circles from Merry Merlot and Misty Moonlight using the same set of dies so I've cut a scalloped circle that's just a tiny bit bigger than that paper circle and then I've cut a plain circle 
that's a little bit bigger again. So that's going to be my embellishment section for the middle. Sandy is saying hello to you all. Um, she's in London waiting for a homebound train and she's going to catch up on the video tomorrow. Well, thank you for popping in for a hi, Sandy. I hope you've been doing something fun in London. I'm just going to cut my layer so it will fit. So I'm cutting this to three and three quarters inches by five and a half inches. That's better. And my paper is three and five eighths inches by three and oh I'm gonna have to write that down in a minute. <laughs> So my card layer is five and a half by three and three quarters and my paper layer is five and three eighths by three and five eighths. I think I said that around the wrong way just now. You can't see that, can you? Let me just tilt that very slightly so that brings that in. Hopefully you can see that on screen now. I think you can. Mm, it's not very straight, is it? Okay, let's just just have a little go at making that straighter. All right, so I'm just going to layer some things up now. That's still not very straight, is it? Let me see if I can improve that. So I'm just gluing my Misty Moonlight layer and adding that onto my card base. And then I'll add my paper with the hole in it on top. like that. So I'm going to layer up my three pieces here. So I've got really narrow borders here but that multi-purpose glue will just allow everything to slide. Kay is saying good afternoon to everyone. We're happy to have you here Kay. Welcome. There we are. So that's my three pieces layered up. And then that is just going to go on here. Now I try to keep the orientation of this piece the same as the paper I cut it from. Um, I've actually got two layers uh, and colours of card in between so it's never going to match up perfectly but equally I don't want it to look too wonky and depending on which paper you're using this can be very obvious or not very obvious at all. So if I look on here um, I can see I have a kind of sketched in tree trunk going down here which matches up with the tree trunk here so I'm just going to try and keep those in line when I stick this piece down. Now I can put this on with dimensionals or I can put it on flat. I've glued my other ones flat so I think just for a bit of variation I'm going to use some dimensionals on this. I'm just watching that tree trunk there and just trying to keep that fairly in line. There we are. So my hole in the paper is now covered up. Um, I've got a rather nice 3D embellishment in there and now it's entirely up to me what I do with it. Um, I have a strip of card here that I'm going to stamp some words on and I'm just looking at the colours and thinking, mm, shall I pop on some rhinestones? Shall I pop on some ribbon? 
haven't got any ribbon that's exactly in those colours. I've got some of this, but I feel that's a little bit heavy. I think I'm going to go for my, <laughs> my go-to. I've just told you I use it all the time. The linen thread. Here we go. So I think I'm just going to tie some of this in a bow. There we are. There's not many things that this won't work with and I'll just tuck that underneath there. So I'll bring this in now to stamp. I've got my stamping mat because I'm going to be using photopolymer stamps and for all these cards I've used the sentiments from the Blossoms in Bloom set. Um, they were just the perfect dimension for these cards and they're such a useful set as well. Got all the key greetings, happy birthday, thank you, get well soon, thinking of you. So I really like these and I use them a lot on my cards even if I'm not using those particular floral stamps. And I'm going to use my Merry Merlot ink and I think we'll make this a birthday card. I'm probably going to have to pull this down to the point where you can't see it well just so that I can stamp it straight so I'm sorry about that. There we are. And while I've got the ink and the stamp out I'm going to stamp my insert as well. And now I will close up the ink or I'm bound to put my elbow on it. Right, I'll set the insert aside for a minute and bring this in. So I'm going to just trim this a little bit shorter. And I'm going to pop it in here, I think. So my centre part is popped up on dimensionals, so I don't know if I'll be able to show you this or not. I don't know if you can see, but down here I've got a gap because that part is higher off the card because of the dimensionals on here. So that means I need to put dimensionals on this side of the sentiment, but not on that side. If I put them on all the way along, then it's going to be on a kind of a slope which I don't want. So I think I probably just need one there and then some glue on the rest of this. There we are. And then Finally, I've got my little linen bow. Now I could use a glue dot on this, but I think I'm just gonna use a little dab of multi-purpose because this is a lot smaller than a glue dot. There we are. So I'll set that aside just to set up a bit while I finish off the insert. And for this, I've just got a strip of patterned paper. And actually, because I wasn't thinking about that, I've really not put this in the right place. I think what we'll do is we'll turn over to the emergency side and I'll put this on and then I'll stamp. That way I can place my words a little better. So I'm using my grid paper to make sure the paper strip is straight. I'm going to trim off a little bit. There we are. And you know when you're cutting patterned paper you get all these little odd narrow strips, don't you? Um, and I always like to be able to use those up if I can. They're too pretty to throw away really. Oop, that's thank you. I don't want thank you, I want happy birthday. 
so I'm just inking my stamp there we are and that will look better than the first one did Lorraine saying hello to everyone. She's only here for a short time as she has to leave for a hospital appointment soon. Well, that's a pain, Lorraine. I'm sure you'd rather be at home crafting, but I hope it all goes okay. And you'll be able to watch anything that you aren't able to see live um, on the catch up. Oh, trying to get hold of this card. I can't seem to open it. There we are. I haven't glued it shut. <laughs> that has been known to happen, but not today. Although it's Friday the 13th, so anything could happen. All right, so that is that card. And if I bring back the other two, you'll be able to see that they're essentially the same design, just with small variations. Try and get them on so you can see them all. I need to move them across maybe a little bit more. No, there we go. So this is the one I've just made. This one is essentially the same. I've just used slightly different sized circles here and I've stuck the circles down flat. And I stuck my sentiment onto a piece of contrast card. So I've got Misty Moonlight as my contrast here. And then my contrast card layer here is Knight of Navy with a uh, Misty Moonlight card base. And I used this beautiful blue conifers paper. And I added some of the holiday rhinestones in the, the dark blue color plus some of this Misty Moonlight white and silver twine. And then I'll just move those a little bit. Then for this one, I picked out the greens and yellows in the paper. So I've used Mossy Meadow and Bumblebee card. Um, I used all straightforward circles, no scallops. Um, I've added some of the Bumblebee gingham ribbon here. I cut little flag ends in my sentiment. Um, and it's up on dimensionals and then I just decided a couple of those lovely bumblebee trinkets would be the perfect finishing touch and for all of these I've added some of the patterned paper to the envelopes so that's the first three cards for my gift pack so Belinda's saying lovely she's trying it now with a peaceful cabin paper that will definitely be worth seeing Belinda please share some photos of that and thank you Marjorie I'm glad you liked those so that's three cards so I thought five cards would be a nice number to pop in this pack so I've made one and then I'm going to make one to show you how I did it so this is my next one which is a very similar idea really except this time I haven't cut into the paper I've added a frame on top just to give me a focal point So for this one, my card base is Cajun Craze. I've used Early Espresso for the layer and then Early Espresso and Merry Merlot here for my frames. My frames are cut using these stitched uh, rectangles dies. And I didn't use the smallest one, but I used the next three. So let's see if I can get those off the magnet and I'll just show you how I cut the two frames. Now I can't get my cutting machine very easily under the camera so I tend to cut in advance and then just explain it to you so if you're wondering why I'm not demonstrating that bit that is why. Um, so this is the faux suede trim I've used on here which although it's sort of ribbony I think is also quite masculine and then I've used that same stamp set here for the thank you. So for the next one I thought I would use this design of paper which I really, really like. I've got a bumblebee card and a mossy meadow layer. And then I've cut two frames. So what I wanted with the frames was I wanted this feeling of depth with the frame. So the outer frame is a narrower one than the inner frame. And if I just show you on the two that I've got ready cut, so they will go together like this. So my outer frame is a narrow one. Uh, the inner one has got a deeper border. 
So for both of them, I've used the fourth largest stitched rectangle. So you can see that's the same for both of them. But then I varied the size of the next rectangle. So to get the narrow frame, I've used the third smallest inside and I cut with both of them at the same time like that. If you have a magnetic plate use that so it'll hold the dies in place so you get an even border. If you haven't pop a bit of washi tape across them and then I used that same fourth largest frame for this one but then I used the second largest sorry not like I'm saying second largest I mean smallest let me say that again this is the fourth smallest and for this one I used the third smallest inside so I'm sorry if I confused you there and then I used the fourth smallest here along with the second smallest just there so the outside of my frames is the same size but the inside isn't and by changing the size of the inside I can allow some of that green frame to show inside my bumblebee frame. I'm hoping that's clear. If anybody needs me to go over that again, let me know. Okay. So I'm going to glue those two frames together first of all. Just a teeny bit fiddly, but it's not too bad. And I just need to match up the outer edges so it's interesting how designs come about really so I've said that that the design on the first cards um, was inspired by something that I saw Mary Dethridge's blog she'd cut the circle out of her patterned paper and then added some layers and then I thought well I want something similar but different and that made me think about first of all a different shape to a circle so I thought rectangles and then I thought well how else can I vary it and that was by applying the rectangle on top of the paper instead of cutting the paper out um, and then gluing it back on top so yeah interesting I think it's always interesting how people think of different ideas so I'm going to layer up my paper I've obviously changed the orientation of the card as well that's something else that you can do that makes a card look completely different you can do exactly the same um, and just turn it through a quarter turn on your card base and it will look totally different and if you're like me and you can't ever bear to make two cards that are identical then that's worth knowing as an idea I think So there we are and then my frame is going to go on top so I'm going to put that up on dimensionals I can use the standard sized ones on the corners but I really need the little ones around the edge because the area is just a little bit smaller oh, I must drink some of my tea in a moment as well well that's going to be stone cold off There we 
go. Okay, I'm going to pop that there. I'm actually going to leave you for two seconds because I'm going to have to go and dog wrangle. I'll tell you about it when I get back. Stay with me. Sorry about that everyone. Oh, tell me, do boys ever grow up? He's 27 and you say to him, don't let your dog in the garden because the lawnmower man is coming. If you do let her out, please let her back in. And he's come home from work early. He's let her into the garden. He's disappeared and any minute now, I know <laughs> the lawnmower guy is gonna come in the garden, leave all the gates open and she'll be gone. Honest to goodness. Right, so <laughs> I have another piece of this lovely linen thread here and I'm going to tie one of these double bows that I've been making recently. So you may have seen me do this a few times. I'll only go through it fairly quickly, but if you want to see in much slower speed how to tie these, then go back to my uh, video where I did ribbons and bows. So I'm just going to hold this linen thread on my middle finger spread out my index and middle fingers just a little bit because that will determine the diameter of the bow and then I'm going to make a full loop around those two fingers in a figure of eight twice I haven't left myself very much on the end so I'm actually just gonna <laughs> just gonna pull that up a little bit there we are then it goes across the middle and through to the back and I just dropped it right let's start that again that's a full loop in a figure of eight. That's a full loop in a figure of eight. Okay, that goes to the back. Do you know, let's have another piece of thread. I cut that thinking that's plenty long enough and it isn't. So let's have another piece and I'll use that one for something else. That way I'm not gonna be fiddling around in front of you. And I can't turn the camera around to show you, but there's a little vole has just come out onto my patio. He's just hoovering up the bird seed that's been dropped. It's so sweet. I think he's a bank vole, although I'm not an expert on voles. But he's very tiny, very sweet. Belinda would probably know. She's very good on wildlife. Right, so I've sent my thread to the back. Now I'm going to bring it round to the front and tuck it under itself, which effectively ties a knot. I think I've probably taught you that or not taught you that in the most complicated way possible. Um, what with having to get a new piece of string and then distracting you with talk of voles. There we go. Anyway, this is my double bow. <laughs> but my Ribbons and Bows Facebook Live shows you that in much more clarity and much slower but I know lots of you have seen that a few times now and what I didn't want to do was bore you to tears so I'm going to pop that on the corner I'm going to stamp a sentiment I think I'm going to make this into a birthday one again I've got some thank you cards and I think birthdays are good this looks to me like quite a good thank you card for a man I'm just going to clean off that stamp because I've got Merry Merlot ink on it and I that's not going to be good because I want early espresso for this card I think well having said that mm, yeah no I am going to there's a lot of mossy meadow on there so that would be the other option but I think actually the contrast will be quite nice I've got early espresso tree trunks on the paper there we are Belinda says, lovely to have a vole. Yes, he's likely to be a bank vole. Lucky to spot one as they're usually very shy. Yes, we've had um, seen a vole here for a few years now. And yeah, he doesn't come out. If we're out on the patio or something, he won't come out. Um, but he's actually, he popped back in. A starling swooped down, but then he's just popped out again. Very, very sweet little thing with a lovely rounded face. 
very small. No, we're lucky. We're lucky with our wildlife here. All right, so that's my happy birthday. I'm going to pop a couple of dimensionals on the back of that. Oops, time for a new sheet of dimensionals. that thread for a minute and I'm going to pop this down in the corner and then hold on my thread with just a little dot of multi-purpose glue there. There we are. So I'll set that aside while I work on the insert. I always have to remind myself if I'm doing a card which is a landscape card to remember to stamp my insert the right way round. I can't tell you how many times I've stamped an insert like this for a card that goes like that. I hope I'm not the only one. <laughs> okay, so I've got my stamp, but I have also got a little piece of patterned paper here. This was just a scrap left from something else and I kept it because I thought the trees are just so pretty and I think it is the perfect piece for the inside. There we are. So now I will stamp my words. And that's ready to go inside my card. There we are. So that is my card number five to go in the box. So I'll just pop both of those there for you to have a quick look and I must have a little drop of my tea. All right so I did pop some matching paper on the flap for that card. So now I just need to decorate the box. So I have one of the acetate card boxes in the catalogue. These come in a pack of, I think it's 10, and they're very reasonably priced. They come flat packed and all you do is fold them on all the score lines, tuck in the bottom as I've done here, bottom tabs and flap, and then once I've put my cards and envelopes in, I'll tuck the tabs and flap in at the top. Uh, depending on how dimensional your cards are, they'll hold anything from two or three cards to about six cards uh, and envelopes. So it just depends how much you've put on your cards as to whether it will all fit on there or not. So what I've got here is a piece of Cajun Craze card which measures uh, 11 inches by three and three quarter inches and I hadn't measured it for the score lines. All I did was I laid it centrally on my box and then I just folded it around like that and I just pinched it on the corners and then I took it off and folded properly on all of those uh, little pinch marks and used my bone folder. I find this way is much more accurate for getting a band that fits really nicely around a box or come to that a belly band for a card. Um, it just accounts for any little variations that there are and gets me something that fits nicely. So now I'm going to fold that around and I'm just thinking about which way my flap goes. So this is the neat edge of the flap with the tucked in bit at the back. So for me, that's the front. 
and this is therefore going to be the back and I did put some tear and tape just on the edge of this because that will be a quick grab when I fold the two sides together there we are so I'm just going to pop that on my table and put my bone folder inside and press that down and if I find this is going to really slide then um, I can always pop some glue dots underneath it but I'm going to leave it until the box is filled because the uh, the weight of the cards inside may well hold that in place on its own and then I've got some decorative bits and pieces for this so this was the one pattern that I hadn't used on the cards so I've cut a piece of this patterned paper with a mossy meadow layer to go underneath it like that let me just slide that to even up the borders a bit And I have some of the faux suede trim here to go round, which is going to go on top of my band of card. And then I'm just going to tie it in a bow to one side. And I may tuck a glue dot underneath that in just a minute. I just need to get the placement right for that bow. There we are. So this is going to go on top. So I need to slide my ribbon a little more to the side and get it on there straight. There we are. Then this will fit on there. Okay, so I will just tuck a glue dot underneath that knot on the bow. I'm just going to pick one up with my scissors and just tuck it underneath and press that bow down. And now I can trim the ends and I know that that's not going to move. band is sliding a little bit so I may need to anchor that but we'll see all right so this piece will now go on top Then I've cut another frame section exactly as I showed you before and then I've cut a piece of the patterned paper to fit inside so I'm going to put the frame together first just matching all the edges there we are and then I'll put a little bit of glue around the aperture on the back just to hold that patterned paper in place
needed to press this down for a little bit longer I think there we are and this is going to go on here like that with some dimensionals I think I'm going to use some edge pieces on the back so let me just snip that you all keep your edge pieces don't you don't tell me you throw them away if you need a long strip um, or a long run of dimensionals the edge bits are fantastic you just need to snip them into strips because they they are actually like a a frame when they come off the sheet so you just need to snip them at the corners so you end up with strips rather than a square added a few bits in the centre just for some extra support as well. Let's take all this backing off. That goes a little bit quicker with the strips as well. Just going to collect those up and get rid of them. Make sure this is up the right way and pop that in the middle. There we are. So that's my decorated box for the cards. Let's bring back the cards. I think I'll put that one on the top of the pile. So that's our two with frames. And then our three with circles. Okay. I'm going to pop that one on top, I think. So I've got the envelopes to go in first. And then I'll pop the cards in. I didn't check these will all fit in. <laughs> I'm trusting that they do. <laughs> haven't made everything so dimensional that I can't get them all in the box. Oops, got my bow caught up there. And what I'm going to do actually is slide these out. There we are. And caught up on that bottom layer there. So I have perhaps gone a little bit more dimensional than I should have done, but they will fit. There we are. And I'm going to tuck the envelopes in. I took the envelopes out. I decided that was going to be easier to put them in last on their own. Here we go. So I've got dimensionals on all five cards. I might have done better with only four in the box, but there we go, they're all in. And now I just tuck the flaps down, tuck the flaps in, and I think anybody would be really pleased to get a box of cards. Thank you cards and birthday cards handmade for them there we are so that uses i think everything that is in the beauty of the earth sampler so that gives you a really good idea of what you could make 
and then finally I just thought I would bring in a project that's completely different um, and also shows you a little watercolouring technique which may be new to you it may not be new and sometimes if I even if I know how to do something I quite like to be reminded of how to do it because I forget I forget that this is a really fun thing to do and I'm just drinking some tea while you have a look at that thank you Kay I'm really glad you enjoyed those Okie dokie. Right, so for this card I've used the Love of Leaves stamps which are a watercolour effect stamp with like leaf silhouettes and they work absolutely brilliantly with the stitched leaves dies. So with the dies you have two dies for each leaf. You have one which will cut you an outline like this and you have one which will add the veins to the leaf which are done in like a stitched effect like so and you can use them together or you can use them separately and the outline dies I don't know if you can see have got a stitched edge to them so when you cut them in card the negative, the piece that you're left with once you've taken out this leaf shape, has a stitched edge to it. So you can use what you might think of as your waist as well as the bit that is the leaf shape. So they're lovely dies. There are um, one, two, three, four, five, six leaf shapes five different shapes of leaves and then this one here uh, you have two which are the same shape but are oriented differently so one curves one way one curves the other way and then this one which is fabulous this puts a stitched shape um, into your card it doesn't actually cut pieces off or cut pieces out it just adds um, the stitched sort of embossed look so that's a lovely die too so this is the Lovely Leaves die set. Uh, no, it's not. It's the Stitched Leaves dies. Sorry, the Stitched Leaves dies, and it goes with the Love of Leaves. So those are the dies that I've used on my card and the stamps that I've used as well. And I'm just going to show you how I got this watercolour effect on the stamps. in oops all my other little box of tricks all right so the colors I'm using are pumpkin pie old olive and crushed curry before we got bumblebee crushed curry was a color I used a lot um, and it's a bit like rediscovering an old friend when I dug it out again <laughs> So I've got several of the leaves here that I've cut, but before I do anything with them, I'm just going to show you how I created them. So let's take a big stamp here. I've also got a bit of kitchen paper to put under what I'm working with because I'm going to use some water. I have my stamp on a block. I have my ink colours. I'm just going to use two of those. And I have some sponge daubers so I'm going to use pumpkin pie and old olive and I've got a different dauber for each colour and instead of inking my stamp in the normal way I'm going to pick up ink from the ink pad and sponge it on and this is my first colour I'm not going to cover the whole of the stamp I'm going to come onto it in a fairly random way and just cover some of it with ink then I'll bring in my second colour and put some more ink on. Now I've obviously already got pumpkin pie ink on here so before I go back to the ink pad for some more old olive I'm just going to scribble it on here. I don't know if you can see there's a little bit of orange there and I just want to get that off before I go back into my ink pad because Ideally, I don't want to contaminate my ink pad with the wrong colour. A 
can be a bit of a memory test as to which bits I've put ink on and which bits I haven't. So hopefully that is all pretty well covered. But I'm going to spritz it with some water and that will help spread the ink. So even if there's a little bit I've missed, um, it probably won't matter. So I've got a stamping spritzer here with tap water in it and I'm just going to spritz this two or three times and then stamp it onto my watercolour paper. I always get asked how much water do I use with this and the answer is it depends. It depends on how wet your stamp is. Uh, sorry, it depends on how large your stamp is and it depends on how good your aim is. So if you miss most of your stamp when you spritz it the first time, you're probably going to need um, an extra little bit of water on there. So I'm hoping you can see, let me lift this up, lots of that ink has kind of beaded up on the stamp. Um, I don't want it flooded with water but I do want most of that ink to bead. I think that is definitely going to be enough. So I'm now going to pop my watercolour paper down and fairly quickly stamp this. I don't want to smash it down on the paper but I don't want to hold it upside down over the paper for too long and have it drip. There we are. So that is now my stamped image. I've got a bit of a puddle here so I'm just going to very lightly just lay some paper on that and just dab that off. I don't want to blot it too much or I'll get a really pale patch. But that gives me an autumn leaf with several colours on the stamp. So I'll set that aside. So I stamped quite a few of those. Some of them I used pumpkin pie and old olive. Some I used old olive and crushed curry. Some of them I used crushed curry and pumpkin pie. So a whole mixture of those three inks. Once they were properly dry, I then die cut them using um, the two halves of the die for each. And I used both dies at once, so I used the magnetic plate for my machine. But if you don't have that, you can just hold them down with some washi tape like that. And then I cut, and my end result then was a cut out leaf with the stitched detail on it. So I cut out a few of those and then if I bring this back you can see I've also got some detailing on my white layer there and all I did for that was I took my piece of Whisper White card and I just used the the centre part if you like so I didn't use the outline dies I just used these dies and I used the different shaped leaves, laid them down and ran it through my big shot. Um, so I did two or three at a time, depending on the spacing, and then came back and did the others. So that just gave me quite a subtle patterning on my layer, but the same shapes that echo those in the leaves. So I hope that is clear to you. So I've got some Baker's Twine here. This is from the Essentials Pack, which has got five different colours of Baker's Twine in it, and it's really nice to use for uh, projects with, you know, more muted colours in it. And again, um, if I'm making a project for a man, I quite often reach for either my linen thread or my Baker's Twine. Okay, I just need to pull that a little bit more. So I'm wrapping this round twice. I'm crossing it and then I'm taking it back up to the top where I'm going to tie a knot. So I'm just tying a reef knot here which again if you were watching my bows and knots and ribbons session a couple of weeks ago you'll have seen and it's a knot that sits flat and doesn't slip and I've just dropped the end for that so let's do it again. You would not believe how tricky it is to do this when you've got a camera watching you. <laughs> so let me talk you through it. I've got one end in each hand, I'm going to put the right end over the left hand end and tuck it underneath and pull it tight and then trying to keep that knot nice and tight I'm going to put the left hand end 
I've got one finger on the knot, which probably isn't helping you see. Put the left hand end over the right hand end and tuck it underneath and pull it tight. That gives me a double knot that will sit flat. Try and show you and it won't slip. If you just tie a double knot, which is often called a granny knot, um, you may or may not end up with a reef knot. Um, and if you don't end up with a reef knot, it's definitely a granny knot. And what you'll find is that that knot can slip. And you don't want your knots slipping and coming open. So I'm just gonna tie just a knot in each end of this, just really to give it a little bit of interest. So I'm just tying a single knot in my twine and then trimming off the ends about half an inch or so below the knots. So I can layer this up now. I have an old olive card layer and a crumb cake card base. And so once these are all layered together, I can just add my leaves and my words and my card is done. I don't think I said earlier, but if you're going to use this technique, it really is uh, recommended that you use watercolour paper. Um, you're using quite a reasonable amount of water with your ink and you can find that ordinary basic white or very vanilla or indeed any of the coloured cards can tend to delaminate a little bit when you use that much water on them. The top layer kind of comes away from the layers underneath and even when it dries you can see that it got too wet. Um, you can use shimmery white card instead and that will work really well in terms of handling the water um, but it will take ever such a lot longer to dry. Watercolour paper is perfect. I also love the texture and the thickness of it too so that's what I tend to use for something like this. So now I just bring in, pick three of my leaves and just arrange them as if they're tumbling down from the trees. We're not quite into autumn yet and I certainly don't want to hurry it. But um, that's what I'm thinking of as I place my leaves. So the watercolour paper takes just a little bit longer to kind of grab with the glue than ordinary card does. So I'm going to hold this a moment longer than I would normally have to. I also use a little bit more glue than I would normally because it's quite heavyweight paper. I'm also sticking this little leaf over the twine so it's a bit bumpy. That doesn't help. There we are, so that's my leaves stuck down, even if they need a little bit of persuading. And then I'm just going to stamp a sentiment. Right, I know I've got that stamp here. <laughs> what have I done with it? As usual, my desk at this stage of proceedings is in a terrible state. So I will have gone underneath something I'm looking for this little thank you. Can I find it? Just looking in the box. Did I leave it in the box instead of putting it on a block? Yes, I did. That's why I can't find it. Look, it's not here ready for me. Never mind. OK, let's pop that on a block. So I like to use my grid paper to line up the stamp. So I put the stamp so that it's straight on a line and then I can get my block straight and then I know that I should be stamping straight. I don't know how I ever managed before I had grid paper. It's just fantastic stuff. All right, so I've got pumpkin pie ink. The word I'm using is this little thank you. So this is from the same leafy stamp set.
and I'm going to try and get that in the middle top to bottom I forgot my foam mat but actually I got away with it so that's all right and let's just snip this a little bit shorter oops sorry just caught the camera did that <laughs> I hope that didn't make you feel poorly and then I'll pop some dimensionals on here stick that in that space there I think there we are and then finally on my insert I've got one more watercolored leaf I didn't want to stamp directly on here because this is basic white and um, I've already spoken to you about how it's not advisable to use lots of water with this card it's fantastic for stamping on but that's what it's designed for not for um, inky techniques that use a lot of water so instead I did one on watercolour paper and I've die cut it like the others and I will just stick it on top for the inside I'm not going to pop words inside because I'm doing a thank you card and I quite like the space to write on there what I'm saying thank you for right so that is that card finished with a little bit of an inky technique along the way that's my other one you can see that although i did the same for all the leaves they all turn out a little bit different that's the one that i stamped which is different again and so i have that card there and then i have my gift pack of five different cards so these all use the beauty of the earth um, paper and then they use a selection of the card colors um, and the trim almost all of which are in that sweet sampler um, you haven't got any, any bumblebee card in there but all the other card uh, or misty moonlight there we go but all the other card is in there this trim is in there and so is the linen thread so that's an idea for a gift set plus an extra card i hope you've enjoyed those i'm going to turn the camera back up now and then i can say goodbye to you okay i've just got to alter my settings a little bit the guy with the lawnmower hasn't turned up which is not good for the way the garden looks but it's much better from your point of view <laughs> because you have not had to listen to a lawnmower in the background so I'm grateful for that didn't do a very good job of clipping that on there we are so I'm just going to wait for my iPad to catch up you're very welcome Marjorie thank you very much it's been lovely to spend time with you thank you all so much for being with me this Friday afternoon I hope you have a lovely weekend next week um, I thought I would play around with the be dazzling um, glittery paper which I should have shown you while I was facing um, down on my desk but let me just hold that up for you so this is free during celebration it's also while stocks last but at the moment there is plenty of it um, I know lots of you have been ordering it already so I thought I would show you a few ideas uh, for that next week um, I can't promise there won't be a Christmas idea in there but it won't all be Christmas by any means because I struggle to think of Christmassy projects in August so um, if you have a fear of Christmas coming too soon then don't worry thank you very much indeed and I will look forward to seeing you again next week thank you Belinda I'm glad you enjoyed it I'm going to sign off now and have a lovely weekend bye bye <laughs>